Hey guys, it's Andy here, and today I'm going to show you these two big guys, which I said I'd build, and I have. So, you can see uh, their numbers here. Uh, it's a one inch uh, diameter brass, three quarter inch diameter magnesium core, and this one is two and a half inches in height, and this one is one and a half inches in height. Now you can notice something right off the bat that was odd. This guy um, did exactly what was expected. If you watch my uh, last two videos, you'll understand. Uh, dielectric grease is supposed to hinder it for the first almost 24 hours or so, which it did in this one, and then it jumped up to 20 milliamps. Whereas this one, it immediately was at 24 and is still at 24, so it's stable. Um, which concerns me a lot because that may mean that this guy, um, I didn't properly coat in dielectric grease fully, so there's some of the crystal composition touching the magnesium. If that's true, then this thing will rot through quickly, but the fact that it's only putting out 24 milliamps instead of, uh, around 230 or more means that hopefully it was just a strange anomaly, but, uh, we'll find out. So when I was building the crystal cells initially, I noticed this in interesting uh, voltage difference when I was touching the anode and cathode with uh, different fingertips and uh, either my left hand or my right hand. And you can see like 1.2 volts and uh, only like 1 volt, but it goes up to 1.2. And uh, it's just uh, kind of interesting how uh, the magnesium and brass is using, yeah my body as uh, kind of a medium between them and uh, it's uh, just something interesting I wanted to report on. I got the uh, 3D printed washer put on. Uh, it's pretty simple. I just heated up this guy and pushed him down in and uh, I used a soldering gun to melt the outside so that this guy will fit into his little slot. So my next uh, iteration of this will have to deal with that and change these measurements but uh, everything turned out good. And then this guy I just used the um, primer bottom plate and uh, it was pretty easy. I just put some uh, plastic pieces in the bottom as spacers so uh, that is a bit different which might have something to do with this uh, oddity but uh, I mean I don't see why it would. It's just a, a solid piece of brass pretty much that goes up to this far. These guys put out 20 and 24 milliamps, which is nice because uh, these guys here, you need about 9 or 10 of these to equal the same current flow. Whereas I can just um, chop these down to about like maybe a centimeter in height, and they'll probably still output this 20 milliamps uh, due to surface area. Um, and the fact that they're brass and not copper, so that 30% zinc might be uh, really beneficial to these, but... We're not sure. I just, uh, I really don't want to throw $75 out to buy, like, how is it, like, 75 feet of 1 inch diameter copper, but, um, I have access to brass at 1 inch diameter, so I'm trying that. And I've got these guys here as well, so I got, I've drilled a hole in there so I can, uh, just shove a wire, loop it through there, and then I've also drilled a hole and put a screw through the top of these two. Um, so that I can easily connect them together, whereas before it was very difficult. So, just little improvements. I'm gonna just play with these and just uh, use them for something cool. Who knows? Because you know, 20 milliamps is a pretty good amount of power, and I only need three of these to be able to power any LED I want. Because I'll get more than 3.8 volts, which is my requirements. I am going to build these two guys here high concentration nickel wire, it's like 90 some, 92 percent nickel wire, and it's just coiled up in there, there's about 18 turns, and you can see I've got it sticking out both ends, so I'm going to do some experiments with that, and just see if that has any effect. The reason why nickel is better than copper, uh, nickel holds its current flow far better than copper, like copper will lose over 75 percent of its uh, current flow as soon as you short it out, but nickel only lose maybe 25 to 50 percent. Um, I've seen it even less than that, so it's really nice to know that you can handle a short circuit a lot better and have a lot better current flow. 
Um, silver would do even better and even more expensive materials would as well. So I'm going to build these two, but the difference between them, because of uh, the last video and uh, these other two big cells that I experimented with and just built, uh, I've uh, developed a new idea. I want to see what will happen if we have um, John from Manahawk and one's concentrations, but with no alum powder at all in either one, and one with... Um, dielectric grease coating the uh, magnesium core and the other one with nothing and I just want to see how quick the corrosion rate is on the one without because John speculated that the alum powder because of its uh, acidic content will uh, corrode the magnesium now if we just remove the alum powder then that shouldn't be a problem we shouldn't have nearly as much corrosion and these things should last longer than a month so uh, I was just curious of that and I thought it would be a really good test because uh, I only have so much of this big magnesium so I would really like to uh, fine tune and uh, sort out a few problems before I go all the way in. I um, currently only have this uh, big piece left so I mean I always have this and then I gotta order more and I'd prefer not to uh, waste my resources. But anyway, so we'll just be coating it with this stuff again. Um, they're both about the same height almost. And uh, we'll uh, find out what happens with that. But it should be very interesting. Anyways, uh, hope you like this video. Um, favorite, subscribe, comment, and have a good day.